Ladies and gentlemen, in the shed today we have a Toshiba RT5160S. It's in pretty mucky condition. It's quite filthy. And if we look inside, if we dare, we can see grass and spider webs and dirt and grime all over it. So we got a bottle of mild green hairy lip squid some cotton buds, q-tips, and a little scouring pad. First thing we're going to do, clean the outside of this bad boy up, and then we're going to get the inside sorted as well. Get it back on the road again. These plastic, everything's a solid plastic. Really good solid plastic. The antenna is cream crackered, I'm afraid to say. That's probably just going to have to get replaced at some point in the future. And then on the back of it, we've got the battery compartment. It requires eight D size cells, 12 whole volts to drive this thing, and I bet they don't last very long as well. On the back of it, we've got our phones, we've got two microphones, a remote control connection, and a Beat 1 or 2. The front of it um, is quite pretty, it's, <laughs> it looks like a painter's radio, doesn't it? It looks like someone's really done a good number on it. The knobs are actually quite smooth, they feel quite good, there's no crunching going on. And let's check the tuning dial. Ah, the tuning dial works, and again the knob feels quite smooth, so not too bad. Switches, yeah, a little bit stiff. Just, oh yeah, that one's a little bit stiff, might need a little bit of lubrication. First things first, let's get some juice on this, magic juice, and clean it up. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a rub down with a, a dry cloth first. Okay, the dust down hasn't really done a lot. In fact, if you have a look at this, look at the patina, I call it patina, but the mess, the crap that's on that handle there. We'll see if we can get rid of that without scouring first. Yeah, well, it's got a brushed aluminium finish to it, so I don't mind running a little bit of a scouring pad over this. There we go, look at that. This is going to come up nice. So this is my um, my neighbour's radio, Andrew, and uh, he <laughs> he said it would be great if this sort of looked a little bit nicer and he'd be more inclined to use it. And um, so I said to him, drunken on a drunken evening, give us a skin diver, give us a fiver, and I'll take care of it for you. Look at that. That's looking much better already. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and do pretty much the rest of this machine like that. So another good thing about these guys is the knobs should just slide off like that. There we go. There we go. Lovely. Right, so now we can get around all of those controls. In a minute, we're going to have to get the Q-tips we're going to have to start getting into places like this here, where there's a spider egg sacs and the like. Fun, fun. We've given it a bit of a good old clean up. Uh, we'll just have a look at the plug. Nothing too serious going on. There's some bare wires here on the switch, but uh, let's plug it in and see if it see if it works. What do you think? Well, that sounded promising. I heard a little dunk come from the speakers. Right, okay. It's about creating a sustainable business for the so that ultimately the jobs that we that we will have. Uh, so this is Ooh. Yeah. So it's got a got a little bit of noise from the um, from the volume knob there. But you know what? It works. Uh, do I wanna yeah, go on then. Uh, we'll have a look, shall we, and see if um, see if the uh, the cogs were inside the mechanism. Sort of thinking that I should clean that mechanism before we fire it up. All right, here we go. Yes, indeed, they do. I can see things moving in there. Right, we definitely need to get in there and clean that up. That's looking like we might be able to get it back to some kind of serviceable condition, isn't it? 
in order to try and help bring back a little bit of the shine, I have some uh, magical stuff here. It's, uh, it's called ACF 50 and um, I use it on my motorbike. That is starting to look so much nicer now. Absolutely magnificent on the outside. Well, we're gonna have to bust it apart and get in there now, aren't we? Okay, well that wasn't too hard, was it? This is the radio section here. This is the tape section here. These are the speakers here. And then over here, we have a little transformer and that's a mains transformer. So uh, it doesn't look like it's particularly high power or anything like that. Um, right, next mission really, uh, knowing the state of the cassette player mechanism, we should just see if we can pop that out. So removing these mechanisms is particularly difficult and they're quite complicated because when you look at the mechanism there's an awful lot of springs and screws and bits of sliding metal and things like that that ultimately mean that if you uh, if you get it wrong and you can't put it back together again afterwards you will have cream crack at it as a kid that was something that I used to do they called me the little wrecker because I, I would take things apart and I'd never figure out how to get them back together it's really, it's not a job for the faint-hearted, this. It's just so complicated, this mechanism full of sliding bits of metal and all that kind of good stuff. Um, what I'm carefully trying to do here is just gain access to the mechanism like that. There we go, now you can get in there. Now we can blow, we can blow all of the crap out of this with a bit of compressed air. The next part of this mission is a tiny little cap of meths and a Q-tip or a cotton bud. And what we're gonna do is just soak that up and we're gonna use that to clean the heads inside this mechanism. Now I know it's very difficult to show you what I'm doing because uh, there's so much stuff in the way and it's quite a tight little space here. And I'm cleaning the play and record heads. Uh, I'm cleaning, I'm going to clean the pinch roller in a minute, I'll show you how I do that, and also the capstan as well. The other thing that we should check is check that drive belt, uh, because that's the drive belt that basically runs this entire mechanism from this motor right here, and the drive belt is feeling quite perished. It would be good to replace that. I don't have the correct size here. I'd have to order one. They're about three or four quid. Not a biggie, really. But um, anyway, let's, uh, let's keep working our way through the mechanism and make sure everything's dust and debris free. That's the important thing. Now it's just a case of fitting everything back in place making sure all those screws are in place and all of the ancillary parts of the mechanism are lined up so that this all functions again. And then there was a little earth cable over here that uh, needs fitting back in place. So once we've got all of that done, we'll put it all back together. And of course, there's always one absolute sod of a screw. All right, come on, surely I've uh, I got you in the right spot. Oh, finally, there we go. <laughs> and eventually, you find out the eject button doesn't work. If the little spring clip, if this little spring clip here isn't pinged up on top of the release mechanism. There we go. Once you've got that in place, there we go. Eject works. <laughs> We'll get a couple more screws back inside her. We need to tidy this switch up. The last thing I promised to do was to rewire this guy so that we hide the two inner conductors, or at least the insulation for the two inner conductors for this cable, and perhaps put a little self amalgamation tape around these guys here, make it a little bit more hard wearing. And this is really quite easy to take apart with a small screwdriver. So leads are shortened, which is nice, you know. It means ultimately this guy's gonna sit in there like that. But some self amalgamation tape. This is the stuff, self amalgamating tape. 
and uh, it's sort of it's sort of amusing because it's uh, really quite stretchy and quite sticky and um, uh, once it sticks to itself well you know anyway so uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, put a little bit of this around each of those entry exit ports and there it is uh, record won't work until you press the tab at the top there which tells the tape that it's not had its uh, non-erased tab removed there we go you can hit record and play now good fast forward rewind pause on and off now we have the fun of cleaning the cap stand and the pinch roller I always enjoy this bit hit the rewind button and that will start the cap stand so the cap stand is currently spinning which means that we can put the q-tip on there the cotton bud on there without gathering any mess or trapping any mess this is just spinning on its own so we could go ahead and give that a little bit of a clean up we'll stop and now we're going to hit the play button now this is the slightly more dangerous bit you don't want to go on the left side of the q-tip because as the pinch roller goes clockwise it'll drag the cotton bud into the pinch roller so what we want to do is go on the right hand side of the pinch roller I don't know if you can see what I'm doing now I'll do it like this here we go so you go on the right hand side of the pinch roller there we go lovely and just slowly but surely give that pinch roller a little bit of love in just give it a rub with something that's going to get rid of millions of years of grease and millions of years of skin dust now we can put a tape in here right what have we got Rick Astley never going to give you up and uh, let's put it in the right way around and let's keep our fingers crossed are you ready for this let's listen is it going to go and just suddenly start pulling every put the tone in the middle balance in the middle volume uh, on about one quarter nothing that's always a little bit worrying isn't it okay it's sort of uh, it, it's working after a fashion but there's a little bit um, a little bit of a problem I would say with the, the switches here we might need a little we might need a little WD right I don't know what I don't know what the music is but uh, we need to get back in there give those little switches a bit of a clean up right <laughs> I should have done this as a matter of course really and I'm sure a lot of you are going to complain at me and say don't use WD-40 use a switch cleaner just get a little bit of that on there and give it a little squeeze and in fact actually what we're going to do is uh, do all the rest of those connectors there as well so they stay corrosion free that's the important thing here is the control and radio pcb clearly this is the radio section over here and this is primarily the control lovely thing about this it's all plated through whole components so it's old school stuff I can handle this kind of madness. They are starting to feel a lot more positive now. Okay, good. Okay, that's the back on. Now we've got some good solid responses from the switches. So uh, time to plug her back in, and let's see if she uh, let's see if she plays ball this time. Tape mode. Right, again, we've still got noise and crackle coming from the potentiometers. Let's get back in there and let's hit them with a bit of juice. Hit these bad boys with a little bit of the good stuff. If anyone's got a small can of WD-40 they can send me, that would be magnificent because apparently I'm running out. <laughs> I'm having to spray this on all sorts of angles in, in order to try and encourage it to do its thing. Twiddly knobby, twiddly knobby, twiddly knobby. <laughs> 
So all of these knobbies, twiddly twiddly knobbies, sorry about the creaking and the groaning, all of those twiddly knobbies, all of a sudden, you know, you've got a little bit of WD on them. They're all feeling a lot smoother and a lot more chilled out. Hopefully that's cleaned the tracks up, if there was any oxidation on the tracks. Radio works, tape works. I've got a speaker that's not working. Why is that then? So what's happened to the speaker? These should be 4 ohms. This one is 4 ohms. This one here is hundreds of kilo ohms. Terrible news. Looks like we've got a speaker that's duff. So pulling this apart, I've ended up with a whole bunch of little bits of paper um, which were put in place as spacers for the speaker. So someone's been in here before to repair this. So getting on the actual wires of the speaker itself. And we're still getting five mega ohms. It's, it's clearly, this little four inch speaker here is clearly cream crackered. We need to find a replacement. I don't know if I've got one. I'm gonna have a look, see what I've got kicking around. Well, I've come up with this. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's a bit out of an old project that I did have kicking around. It's a four ohm speaker, three watts. This is a two watt four ohm speaker. Pretty much the same, just a little bit smaller. This is dubious engineering, by the way. Ultimately, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this speaker out, I'm gonna unsolder this and put this in its place. <laughs> Yeah, look at that, completely open. And there you go, just to prove everything's good. Yeah, that speaker is cream cracker. Amazingly, the screw holes for this have literally ended up in the corner of the wood. Okay, it doesn't look nice, but it's functional and slightly dubious. So uh, there we go, a 4 ohm, 3 watt Bluetooth speaker. Let's see if this sounds any better now. All right, ladies and gents, here it comes. Now that's interesting. Oh wow, check it out. Apparently, a little bit of a problem with the tape here. It, um, it's popped out of its out of its shell, that's um, that's not good. And this, this is a high position SA90 as well. It's been a long time since I've taken a tape apart. But guess what? We actually genuinely have to. So I'm just gonna pop out the top three screws because I've got that little problem there where the tape is um, uh, sitting outside of the shell. And if I very carefully encourage that back in place there we go and then just give that a little bit of a run on happy days has anyone got a pencil does anyone remember a pencil could save you many aa cells in your sony walkman right okay let's get this plugged in to the tape player come on now <laughs> And so here it is. So the brown in space and silver in space there, and that's why they do it. And it hey, it's showing over the years as well. The this speaker? Yes. Yeah, not the referee. Not the trailer. <laughs> and this, this speaker. is speaker. Guardiola we're talking about. Yep. Uh, free kick then. Nice even so balance. Walker clattered into him. We're going to restate that. He nudged into T and E. Dropped the tone. Uh, hit the deck. Free kick though for Arsenal. Ceballos runs over it. Increase so the tone. In by Saka, where he dropped it. It's beautiful into the area and sliding in and for it. Absolutely from the no crackle, no pop coming from any of the controls. <laughs> 
and let's play. <laughs> Just changing the tape because I'm a little bit nervous about that. This is uh, Nan Smith, uh, organ and piano. Right, this is my grandmother. ending wasn't it thanks ever so much for watching take care have a wonderful wonderful week and weekend please give us a good old thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and we'll catch you on the next video cheers and beers guys and girls dubious engineering on youtube can you imagine waiting this long for a 90 minute tape to rewind <laughs> hello and uh and welcome to Jazz Club. Today we're gonna refurbish, <laughs> we're gonna refurbish this old Toshiba 5160S. We're gonna take good care of it.